Hello and welcome to part 6. Today we're doing materials. Let's get into it. Before we start, I've put together the materials on my Gumroad page. Link in the description if you want to download those. Before we start, just a couple of things we should uh, know about. So first of all, enable Node Wrangler in the add-ons. And also if you want, you can add, download the advanced glass shader link is in the description. And this is the glass shader that I mentioned there. That's the one I've used. Feel free to use that if you like. And let's have a look at the, um, the main body, the orange and the yellow. We'll start with the yellow. You can see this body part has two materials assigned to it, the uh, orange and the yellow. This is the orange one. So straight off the bat, everything is based off this Voronoi texture, pretty much for all of this um, materials. So control shift left mouse click will enable you to preview each node as you click it and clicking again will cycle through the, uh, the nodes available on the outputs there. So I'm using the color output. And I'll show you what that looks like. And it looks really, it's really small because I've scaled it up to 850. The default is five. So this is what that looks like at default, which is lovely, but that's not what we want. We want these to act like the speckles that you would see in a metallic paint effect. So make them really small. Something like that is very good. And I simply run that through a color ramp to turn it into a grayscale. So as you can see, that's plugged into the roughness. And to get back to your principled BSDF, control shift, left mouse click to get the output from that to the surface. So let's have a look at this uh, node setup. We've got the ob obligatory texture coordinate and mapping coordinates. The important thing to mention here is use the object output for the texture coordinates. The Voronoi texture is pretty much standard as is. And here are the uh, the values for the color ramp, C2, 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 I've used there. And on this one here on the left, I've used 8A, 8A, 8A. What else do we have? We have a, a metallic set to uh, set to one, of course. The, the hex value for the orange I've used is DF7, F29. Feel free to use that. As I said, metallic is set to one because this is a metal and I've also added uh, a clear coat to that as well, as you can see there. That just gives it another level of lacquer, if you like, uh, on top of the, the metallic look. And that's, that's pretty much it for the orange, really. Um, just going back to the clear coat. So if that was turned to zero, you can see that that looks great. But you don't really get much you know, distinct highlights if you turn this up. And that would depend on your... You can see there we've got more specular highlights, hard highlights there. And of course, that's that's controlled by the clear coat roughness. I'll set that to a value that you like. I've used 0.1. Everything else is default. At the back there, you can see I'm just pointing out the yellow part which is um, exactly the same as you can see, the Voronoi, the color ramp. Um, and I've added a color ramp to the uh, base color as well. You don't need to do that to be fair. I don't think the color ramp makes a huge difference, but I just thought I'd add it anyway. So here's the color ramp for the color. If we disconnect that, that's the base color that I had in there before. Let's have a quick look at these um, these values. So this is a non-metallic material. I think everything else on that shader is pretty much default. And no clear coat on that, of course. That's just the default zero. The same scale value there on the Voronoi. Uh, just copy and paste the nodes from one shader to another. another. Let's have a look at the values for the um, the color ramp. The one on the left is 2E, 2E, 2E. And the one on the right is 8, A2, A2, A2. So 
So here's the orange shader. Not to worry if you missed this part because I've actually added all of the, um, the shaders at the end of this video. And also check out the chapter markers in the description if you want to jump to those materials individually. Let's have a look at the chrome metallic one, which are these decorative lovely parts there. And I've also used that across the whole model, including, including the screw heads, some of the dials and so on. So again, very basic, metallic of course, set to one. And they have the same um, inputs on the left hand side, the Voronoi texture and so on, the color ramp, as you saw before. And you can zoom in there and just see how that specular is, is working. And as mentioned earlier, uh, if you click on a, when you start off with your first setup, so let's take the orange one as an example, you can copy these, just drag a box and select them, control C to copy them. And then when you create your other material, you can simply paste that in with control V, just like that. And there they are. And then you can just hook them up and adapt them as needed. That's pretty much what I did for these materials. And here's the metal one in all its wonderful glory. Let's crack on. The green one, I don't mean the Hulk, of course. So you can see we've got two material slots on this one as well. We've got the metallic and we have the, the green one. So to do that, if you're not familiar with adding more than one material to a, a single object, you simply select the faces that you want to apply the material to, select the material in, the, in one of the slots and most important, of course, click the assign button. Something that most people tend to forget, including me. So the green button, as you can see, is very similar. And again, based off the, the orange one and the metallic one and so on. So the same nodes, same values, a different color ramp. And that goes into the base color this time. It doesn't go into the roughness, which I set at 0.25 the values for the uh, color ramp here. The one on the right is 99BAA7. And the one on the left is 888AA897. Random colors there. And here's the whole button green setup. Let's have a look at this plastic thing, uh, the inner scope, that object there. So just one material, of course, assigned to that object. I've called it plastic. Again, the same thing, same Voronoi and inputs. That goes through a color ramp. And the values are 27, 27, 27 for the one on the right and the one on the left is 191919. Roughness 0.25, I set on that one. Now, to be fair, I didn't do much research on plastic um, attributes for material. I just went with something that looked pretty good. And here's the whole node setup. Right, the glass one. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've downloaded and used the advanced glass eye mesh material. Uh, it's pretty good, I've used it before. Um, these are the values that you have to, or parameters I should say, that you can play with. The, the biggest one I've changed is probably the absorption amount. I think the default is 50, I turned it down to 10. And the shadow amount, of course, you can play around with. And the colors, very simplistic. So I took a sample of that green there, I believe is this value. And I pasted that onto the glass material under the absorption color. So you can see it's the same color there. Of course, you can change the base color to anything you like. Make it more stylized, of course. Okay, let's have a look at this dial. This is the anisotropic metallic one. And you can see there we've got these lovely kind of, um, I don't know how you, it was obviously anisotropic, but I don't know how I would describe it. Um, if you look at the bottom of your, let's say a cooking pan or a kitchen pan, you'll see this kind of effect. And all I did there was select the metal texture I made previously, hit the little icon I just showed you there, 
to duplicate it and then change some of the settings there. 0.25, I believe, is 90 degree rotation. So you can see there, it's at a zero, that bit there doesn't look as good as the top part. So it just needs a rotation of 0.25, which equates to 90 degrees, and you get that effect, which is really nice. The other part of that is the plastic, which we also used uh, in the telescope inner part. I'm really happy with the way this came out, that dial. I think that looks great. So here's the anisotropic metallic material. Great, moving on. Ah, the gaskets. That sealed it. Bada boom. <laughs> the gasket again is very basic. Uh, the only difference here is uh, the color ramp really to uh, the, a lot brighter gray values and that gives us a one more after a more of a matte finish so there's the value for the base color 1a 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 so it's very dark very dark gray everything else is, is default and as i said the uh, the color ramp there is plugged into the roughness the value for the right hand side is cc 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 that's your web friendly color right there and on the left hand side you've got a5 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 Now let's have a look at the uh, ceramic one, if that's what you call it, I'm not really sure. Um, at the risk of repeating myself, it's the same as before, the same node set up, the same values for the Voronoi, using the object output on the texture coordinate again, and a very simplistic color ramp uh, plugged into the base color as before. Um, a bit more of a difference in the color ramp grayscales there. Let's have a quick look at those. The one on the right, we have AC, AC, AC. And the one on the left, I'm using 2D, 2D, 2D. And the color ramp, F7, E, F, D, C. For the one on the right and the one on the left, slightly darker as you can see, DED 6C6. Barely indistinguishable, but it helps. Of course, non metallic, everything else is standard. Feel free to make up your own materials if you prefer. These are, as I say, very simple. Now, it's getting a little bit more complicated now. This is the cloth material where I've combined a wave texture with a magic texture. Um, and both of those are running through bump nodes, which plug into the normal. So let's have a, let's have a look at this, how this works. Here's the overall. I'm not going to go through all of it. To pause the video here. Uh, I did forget to connect the output on the principled BSDF to the surface there. Um, Here's the base color, F7 EA CD for the cloth. Um, let's move on to the needle. Very basic again, metallic one, roughness 0.3, and a dark gray 191919 on the hex color there. And that's it for the needle. Doesn't need much more than that. It's too small to, uh, to do more with, really. You don't need it. Right, the decal part, again, uh, not again, but um, you could split this off, this face, and have it as its own object, but I kept it as part of the meter. Now this face uses a UV unwrap, and I created a very simple texture, as you can see there, um, which I've applied to the base color. So nothing fancy, by all means make up your own texture if you want to, something a bit more interesting. I probably could have done that, but uh, just run out of time really. So to unwrap it, select the face and go to the side view and I chose project from view bounds and that enables you to see the circle is exactly fitting the UV space. Just like that. You can see the texture in the background and the decal side of the, the ray gun is exactly the same principle. Um, same as that. So you select those faces and UV unwrap them from the side view using exactly the same process.
and here it is in the UV editing workspace. Very basic UV unwrapping. Right, the cloth part is also using a particle system set to hair. Click advanced. I'll try and run through this as best I can and show you the kind of things that I've, the settings I've used. Again, this, uh, this may vary depending on the scale of your objects. So do play around with some of the values here. I'm with a number of 2000 for the emission. Now the hair length value is one that you'll certainly want to play with and along with other values further down, which we'll get to later on. Segments are used five. That I believe is pretty much uh, default settings. As I say, compare these values with what you've got and replicate them a little bit. Now, the Brownian is uh, slightly above zero, so 0.025. That's really important because it creates this rather chaotic or organic look to the cloth or the hair system, I should say. So 0 0.025 on the Brownian. Nothing there to see, nothing there to see either. Now under render, we've got path and I've also assigned the material, very basic material. Um, same color as the cloth one, really. That's pretty much it. So here's the cloth hair material. Let's have a quick look at that. As I said, very simple, very basic. And straight off the bat, the color is the same as the cloth one. I just copied and pasted it there. Roughness I set to 0.75 and that's it. Let's go back to the physics point here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, let's carry on. Let's, let's open that up a little bit there. So physics, as I said, we've covered that already. Render, as, a, as we've just seen, path, and then set a material if you wish. Show emitter, of course, otherwise you won't see the faces. Everything else is pretty much default. Um, the steps may be up tweaked, I can't remember. Those I haven't changed. And this one's important because it adds a lot more geometry or hair uh, that cost nothing really to render. So I placed it on simple and I added an amount that I was happy with. And that's the bit, the length there is the part you need to also play around with to get the length to be consistent with the, the main source of the particles. So for me, 0 0.07 worked fine. And I've dabbled with these quite a bit. And also the radius and the size there as well, as you can see. So you've got the size of one and the radius. So all these values you may have to play around with. Nothing to see here, I didn't change any of these. Or the roughness. Or the kink. We've got some great options there. Now the hair shape, I certainly did change. Uh, Look for values for root and tip. So they're the ones you want to be changing. Again, based on your, the scale of your scene and your object, Play with these values to get something that looks similar to what I've got there in the viewport. Field weights I haven't changed. There's no physics, physics going on here. And the vertex group, of course, I used to control the density. All that means is I'm telling Blender where I want to um, put the particles and where not to. Let's have a quick look at that and see how that works. So the object selected, you simply go into weight painting. And to access that, that's in the top left. There we go, top left. So from that drop down menu, click on weight paint. And you can see the weight paint that I've used there. So as it says there, red is hot, blue is cold, and the red parts are where your particles will emerge from. The cooler it gets, it goes to blue, it fades out effectively. It's a heat map, that's all it is. So I went in there and just painted that um, manually, very simple to do. Remember to make the um, the weight one, which is to add heat like that, as you just saw. Ten change the weight value to zero if you want to take away, make it colder. And then assign the head, uh, whatever the vertex group that is created to the density under vertex groups. So here are the um, screenshots for all the materials. I let this play out, feel free to pause the video and duplicate them.
So there you go. Thanks for watching. As I said, on Gumroad page, you can find these materials available for free. I'll see you in the next part when we look at animation. Bye for now. Yeah.